My man, Lupe Fiasco is in the studio right now. How you doing, bro? What's up, bro? I'm good. Man, let, let's talk about it because, you know, I was kind of thinking about this, you know, when we heard word that you were coming into San Diego and kind of uh, was passed along your Rolling Stone article. And that's kind of like the focal point for today because, you know, being a fan of you, you know, over years past and mm-hmm. a couple of years ago, our partner, Dan, you know, we did a promotion with you guys and I was thinking to myself, ooh, Lupe's coming in. We're going to talk about the brand new single and everything. I got my laser skateboard. You know, we're gonna have the man sign right, it and make right. it official today. I mean, that's that's how right, you know cool it is. Right. So, Appreciate that. But you know, you know, real quick because old school love it. Um, people haven't I want to say haven't heard from you. You've been you've been there, and it's it's one of those things too because everyone know, has known that you've been somewhat outspoken. Yeah, a little bit, just just a little <laughs> bit. But I gotta commend you. A little but bit. When you go on Fox News years ago, that twenty eleven. 2010 yeah. and you go up against the man you know and i'm laughing my ass off thinking to myself <laughs> points to lupe fiasco and, and i guess it comes down to people understanding who you are you yeah know? you know where you come you know where people come from they speak about for first i'm in san diego because i'm out the house of blues tonight. sure yeah so come out check me out with the house of blues tonight my man Stolly, my man boy illinois my man d1 rocking the scene getting big so if you ain't got nothing to do coming out of the house of blues you rocking yeah um but <laughs> I said, you know, it, it all comes where you come from. It's your yeah. frame of reference, what you've been introduced to as a, as, a, as a child, who your parents were, what their beliefs were, who your friends were, what did you grow up seeing, thinking, yeah. believing, what were you introduced to? And, you know, that kind of designates what you're going to talk about in whatever field you're in. You know, yeah. if you're a writer, if, you're a, if you work at the bank, you know, whatever yeah. your thoughts and emotions are about the world, what they are. Um, you know, and some of mine are harsh, you know, some of them, yeah. you know, and not harsh to... The person who's used to being a little bit more tame about certain things. That would be me. Kind of fed a certain story right. about certain things. Um, and in some instances, it's super weak. You know, it's super yeah. just kind of like, oh, we already knew that. You know, or sure. I'm not saying anything that the news isn't saying, that CNN isn't saying. Um, but I say all that to say, and part of that Rolling Stone article was uh, I said I wasn't going to talk about politics anymore. Sure. You know, um, and in, in my music or anything like that, I actually stopped doing public speaking about it as well too, yeah. um, because it just it's such a distraction, you know, from the, from the music. And I find people taking personal shots at me via the music. And when I respond, you know, it's like, well, you're a musician, you shouldn't be responding to such and such. Well, it's like, yeah. well, they're not attacking me for being a the music. They right. love my music. Yeah, you know, they just hate my politics. <laughs> you know? um, right. So it just became such a confusing thing. Uh, we just dis- I decided to just kind of leave it alone, you know. Well, I mean, you know, and then going back to it because I I personally appreciate it because you know it's kind of like when Kanye went back you know on TV to talk to what's his name the uh, comedian guy, and you know he, he's kind of justifying who he is as an artist whether he's promoting it out there in his music. You have every right to do that, and like you said, maybe people just mis- misunderstood it. But- yeah, but it's not even misunderstanding. People understood it very well. Yeah. Um, it was the truth. Yeah. I've never said a lie. You know, yeah. I've, I've never just made up something for the sake of, hey, I'm just make up something and just throw it out there. Everything that I've said is, you know, provable and on the, in in research and what have you. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's not like it's crazy conspiracies. But sometimes that don't matter. You know, yeah. and at the end of the day, I'm here to, to make music and make money. That's what people about. are here to kind of be entertained by music yeah. and make money to my music. You know, inspire you to go do something with your life. Um, and that just became kind of lost sight of that. You know, and just decided to just leave it alone and just focus on the music. Any regrets? Uh, you know, because nah, of that, the point at all? I don't, just... I, don't have a, I don't have any regrets about it at all. Um, you know, I understand that there's certain uh, things that happen when you take a certain stance um, socially, not even politically, just yeah. socially. Like, I choose to stand up for this group of people who I feel are being yeah. oppressed. Um, the people who are oppressing them mm-hmm. are going to be like, oh, yeah, well, we're not rocking with you. Sure. It's like, of course they wouldn't. Like, why would you? Because you're oppressing these people so why would you come to my defense or why would you want me to be sponsored by your company or why would you want to cut me a check to do such and such yeah. it doesn't make sense but what i've learned is at the end of the day you stand for what you stand for um i'm like i said i'm 31 yeah um i'm an old guy you're not i'm kind of i'm kind of like set in my way <laughs> you know right. and i've spoken my piece yeah. is is nothing to kind of really add on or embellish yeah so it's like now from here on out let's just make music let's make fun and not even that is fun music party music because yeah. that's not really my niche yeah let me just go back to just the focus being 100 percent music. Yeah. well let's know? clarify because you know i've seen other things like inter- uh, interviews articles it's ratchet 
you know, as as apparently you stated in another yeah, interview. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, damn, hell yeah. It's, it's damn ratchet. <laughs> and so it's the hell with the party. We're getting ratchet. <laughs> getting I'm ratchet. still I'm still trying to, yeah, you know, yeah. you know, get a grasp on that with Lupe Fiasco ratchet. But, you know, hey, whatever works. Yeah. Well, no, it's not It's not even an attempt to just be like, oh, man, I'm not going to do ratchet music. Right. Because my, my ratchet isn't my brother's Juicy J's <laughs> sure, ratchet. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. My ratchet definitely has some teeth Ooh, to it. Okay. Um, and it's more about, for me, rap, ratchet is just taking, it's just graphic stuff, yeah. you know? And that graphic stuff could be anything. Yeah. It could be a word. It could be a point of view. It could be whatever it is. So when I, when Lupe says ratchet, just know yeah. it's not, we finna start popping bottles yeah. and doing other stuff. But, uh, you know, it's my, my take on ratchet situations. Yeah, yeah. And that's why I always, I have my take on skateboarding. Yeah. You know, I have my take on suicide. Now yes. I have my take on, yeah. I have my take on, Bad bitches, yeah. you know. Now you get my take on crack, you know, which mm-hmm. is a song I do with Chris Brown or what yeah. have you. Um, but even to balance all that out, bro, old school love, you know, mm-hmm. what I'm what I'm known for, what I'm used to, you know, my lane from superstar to show yeah. goes on the web to now, just giving you nice, thought provoking records that you can just live with, you know, and yeah. be inspired from. So I'm still on that kind of spin, you know. I want the angry Lupe back. <laughs> what are you talking about? Angry no, I, was like, I was like, God damn it! I'm, I'm, this is Lupe. I'm not angry. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not angry, yeah, bro. Yeah, like yeah. people, people think people. It's because I never let people get a personal view of me. Yeah, yeah. I've turned down so much stuff and so many things for people to get a personal piece. And I've always said, like, listen, man, this is music, and that's where it's gonna stay. I don't want you to come to my house. Yeah. I don't want you to have who. I don't want you to interview my moms. Like yeah. that's that's not what this is for. Like this is for, for me just as a musician to make music and you know give it to people and come see me on stage. But now you can't come backstage. Like now you can't come on tour bus. So you're not gonna see me and my yeah. homies joke or see me and my homies conversate yeah. about serious issues. So what people get is just like this contextualized, you know, kind of a uh, copy paste version of Lupe yeah. via blogs or via the media. And th- at the end of the day, the media only cares about headlines. Yeah. And they only care about headlines. They don't care about the content of the story. You know, they don't even care if it's true sometimes. It's just about let's be the first to get this out. Yeah. And then every other news agency or blog is just kind of like, okay, let's just take the best of what that story said and add our own stuff to it. Then yeah. you get the third, fourth tier blogs, and they're like, okay, let's take the best of what they said and let's just mess it up even more. Like, yeah. Let's put more kind of untruths into it and, and unfortunately that's what people get and that yeah. overshadows the music um i don't know if it's because there's so much music that people want to have i had one radio personality do tell me you know the whole interview was about music mm-hmm. and then we got to the end of the interview it turned into just like well let's just talk about relationships because that's what people want to hear mm-hmm. and i was like well i don't want to talk about that yeah do you want to talk about that do you really care like yeah. you know what my relationship status is or such and such and such and me not telling you that now we're enemies, yeah. you know, or now I can't come back to your radio station no more because was it really about the music or was it more about you want the nitty gritties of, of people's personal lives? And at the end of the day, we're musicians, but we're people. You yeah. Know what yeah. I'm saying? Like we're people. We got families to protect. Um, and it's not even images to protect. It's mm-hmm. the privacy of our families. You know, we're not hunting down paparazzi or we're not hunting down radio or interviewers or journalists to get the dirt and then create crazy songs with mm-hmm. headlines about this random journalist or this random DJ. Um, we don't do that. So I th- it's just like a respect thing. And unfortunately, sometimes artists come out on the bad yeah. on the bad side of it. And when we try and defend ourselves, we're yeah. crazy or we're no, angry. no. Yeah, you know, for me, I, I I'd love doing kind of like impromptu, you know, um, interviews per se. Because, you know, you, just, you really want to get to know a person. Because it, I don't know when it was, like months back or a year or so, you had a tweet about something that I was like, whoa, you know, it was pretty deep. And mm-hmm. just, you know, when you're on Twitter, it's like 142 characters. And that's all you get. Right. And I'm thinking, trying to figure out where you were coming from. But, you know, going back to the album, you know, like you said, it, it, you you want to go years from now, be retrospective and see how you've been. You're probably looking back at who you were in the past. Mm-hmm. But now, you know, whether it's maturity and so on and so forth, and, and when I said the whole aspect, I want the angry. I'm not. I'm not trying to pull anything <laughs> back. But I was talking to my buddy about you because he's more of a fan, right. and he's like, "Oh yeah, that's the that's the dude that I would love to have." Because if we went to McDonald's and you know Lupe ordered a six piece and they only gave him five, he'd go back and say, "You know, you wouldn't be mad. You'd say, well, you gave me five. There's supposed to be six. No, nah, and- see, that's a misconception. <laughs> that's a misconception. You know what it is? That's, right. that's, that, those are people's projections of right, themselves right. onto other people. Sure. Because first, I wouldn't even go to McDonald's. Oh, okay. Like, that's yeah. the first part. Like, why are we going to McDonald's? Right. Like, we go to Old Country Buffet or something like that. Like, why okay. are we going to McDonald's? 
So, so it's though <laughs> it's things like that where sure. people project what they think or what they want an artist to do or be like or sound yeah. like. And then when they build this up for themselves, and they could be the biggest fan or the yeah. biggest hater, then when they meet the person or they get a chance to meet the artist on a personal level yeah. and it doesn't match up to what their own projections yeah. or their own creations of the artist were, people get mad. You know, people mm -hmm. get upset. People feel slighted because you weren't living up to their expectations. But it's like you can't live up. The only expectations you can live up to are your own. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, you can't project onto me that I'm going to act crazy because they gave me five chicken McNuggets. <laughs> like, dog, like, you're doing too much right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, right. Like, do you even, what, let's, let's talk about these songs. Like, did you buy the last album? Like, right, right. You know, et cetera. Yeah. But, you know, it's, unfortunately, that's what we, that's what we are. Yeah. You know, that's the society that we live in. That's what we all been kind of engineered and, you know, kind of trained to be like and to react like that. You know, yeah. it's to see people and try and see ourselves in that person then yeah. when we got the opportunity to be around that person they don't live up to that now yeah. we feel a certain way well i respect it so much because you know given this opportunity to kind of hang out with you never had a chance to meet and of course going to the album you know i think you were saying or somebody said 85 percent, 90 percent done 90 percent done i was yeah. called tetsu on youth mm -hmm. it's my fifth album um should be out hopefully early 2014 yeah. old school love is the first single yeah. we're on tour right now tetsu on youth preview tour um, where we're basically just kind of giving people a little glimpse of what's to come on the record, um, doing a few brand new songs, doing some of the old school stuff. But yeah, it's like 80, 95 percent done. Actually, it's actually really, to be honest, like 97, 98 yeah. percent done. And the only reason I'm really kind of going back in the studio is because we didn't have time to finish before we did this tour. You know okay. what I'm saying? So we're going back to finish a couple songs, literally just do interludes yeah. and, you know, kind of introductions. And then we'll be done. You know, one of the best quotes is you saying uh, something about was in regards to the album. Um, now I'm forgetting. Oh, there it is. The quote. Oh, shit. I can't believe Lupe did a record with this or that guy. It's kind of yeah. like with Ed Sheeran. <laughs> right. I mean, OK, obviously, you know, uh, label me. Right. But was that something that, you know, you wanted or they kind of said, hey, we, you know, team up with this dude? Uh, it was something. It was definitely like, like team up with this dude. But it was something that was like, you know, I'm not going to fight it. You know, and then I got my homies, like my man Guy Sebastian yeah. was really the force behind me doing the record. He was like in the studio, we were recording some records. I played he was like, What you got for your next album? Play them old school love. Yeah. And he was like, Yo, that's crazy. You need to finish yeah. that, do that record. And so sometimes as an artist, you don't know what the hit is gonna be. You know, you just in your zone creating what you wanna create and then when it's trusted people who yeah. come in and say, Hey, this is dope, this is a good look, this is that, you know, and you know that those people trust it because they're for for your whole career. Not just to sell a bunch of records right now and don't really care who you do a song with and don't really care if you know the artist or, yeah. you know, people's integrity or, you know, what's going on with them. You know, so when I got people in my corner like that, it's easy yeah. to be like, yeah, let's do Ed Sheeran. Let's do that. You know, oh, oh, yeah, let's do such and such with this. And then on the flip side of it, it's like, yeah, I'm do a song with Rick Ross. Yeah. Because you know? that's right. my, he's the homie. You know, let me do a song with Chris Brown because that's my homie homie. That's like my little bro. Nice. So, yo, yeah, let's do that. And, and in spite of everything, what people think and what people say, and the, from the day one fans to the new Lupe fans, you know, it's like, no, nah, these are my peoples. And you know when I do a song with somebody that I'm not finna just rock with anybody. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's a meaning behind me doing a record with this person or jamming down with this person in a certain capacity. So, you know, the whole album is littered with features that are definitely people going to be like, yo. I'm excited. Wow. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah that's, that's what I'm talking about. And, and again, you know, Lupe Fiasco... Tonight you're going to be at the House of Blues. House of Blues performing yeah, live yeah, and man. any surprises and things of that nature. Um, no, nah, not really. You know, we, it is basically sometimes you don't need a surprise. Like yeah. what what it is yeah. is good. Yeah, you know, and be excited about that. You know, but but definitely shout out to the homie yeah. Stolly who's opening up for me from MMG. Uh, he's doing his thing on the road with us. My man D1 doing his thing, nice. up and coming artist from New Orleans. And my man Boy Illinois, up and coming artist from Chicago, doing his thing. So yeah. nice jam packed night of hip hop fun yeah. and excitement tonight. So, so yeah. we're getting ratchet, but just let you know, no twerking. That I'm kind of, you know, no. No, twer you can twerk. No, listen, let's not let's not set rules for people. <laughs> yeah, yeah, let's yeah, right. not set rules for people because what if they invent? <laughs> guess who's still twerking? <laughs> guess who's twerking? Yo, yeah. yeah, okay. It's 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 it's, it's African villages. <laughs> Where twerking is like the dance of respect when yes. you come into the village. Yeah. You don't see some ladies popping it for you, but it's all on our perspective. Bro. We're not here to tell people what to do, tell them what not to do. Live your life. Don't hurt nobody else. You know, keep it moving. Again, the brand new album, Tetsu and Youth, uh, coming in 2014. The single with Ed Sheeran and what? iTunes, $1.29. Yeah, old School Love is on the iTunes right now. Yeah. Climate creeping up the charts. Should be yeah. doing real good for us, man. Yeah, man. When I heard it. 
Loved it. Thank since, you, bro. Since jump, man. Appreciate, appreciate it. you. Appreciate it. Lupe Fiasco in the studio. Ladies and gentlemen.